Hi guys, it's Judith from the Intuitive Body Foodie Network and I cannot believe that I have not created a fermented carrots recipe video <laughs> on this channel um, because carrots are one of my absolute favorite foods, especially when they're fermented. So today, infinite possibilities with carrots. Come and I'll show you. So some of the things that you're going to need, uh, tools that you'll need for this recipe is a good sharp knife, uh, a grater or a food processor if you want, um, a chopping board, something to put your carrots in just while you're uh, grating and or chopping, and other ingredients, maybe some ginger, turmeric is what I'm using today, ginger and turmeric, cauliflower, broccoli, etc. I'm going to show a couple of different ways, first of all, to ferment carrots. I have regular long carrots and I have baby cut, peeled baby cut carrots as well. And what I'm going to do to begin with is I, I don't typically take off the outer skin of the carrots. Uh, just because they're very beneficial in terms of bacteria when you're fermenting. So I'm just going to show you different ways of styles, I guess, of creating a fermented carrot. The first one you've seen in several past videos, if you've been watching them, are what I call carrot coins. That's one way. The next way Like I said, you can use a grater or a food processor. The next way is to simply grate the carrot. Another way is you've all seen matchsticks, whether they're quartered or you can make tiny little matchsticks. like so. I'm not going to be making a lot of fermented carrots today because I have gallons of carrots in the back. Um, suffice to say, and you can make these even smaller, depends on how skilled you are at creating even tinier matchsticks, uh, either with a knife or with a, another, like I said, a food processor tool, etc. And then you can even do larger, like half sizes. And of course, you can also, and this is why I brought the baby carrots out, you can ferment whole baby carrots. So the reason why I want to show you the different ways of preparing the carrot for fermentation, it all comes down to how are you going to eat it. So as a snack, I love to ferment whole baby carrots. Um, I will simply do these with, and I'll show you a, d a couple different ways. Sometimes I'll do it with just ginger. Sometimes I will do it with ginger and turmeric. Sometimes I will ferment them just with, I love caraway with carrots, so caraway seeds. Um, that said, you can put any herb that you like according to your taste buds. So these make a wonderful snack even when they're fermented. I'll have a jar um, about this size. This is a pint. I have fava beans fermenting in this, but I'll make baby carrots in a jar like this and then when I just want a snack, I'll just grab a couple carrots and munch on them similar to how you would have these in the fridge and you'd just pull them out and snack on them. Matchsticks, um, I like to ferment these and put these in a garden salad. Grated carrots, I love to add these to uh, kraut and sometimes I will simply grate them again because I like caraway and I might even add a little dill. 
I'll ferment them just like this or I'll add beets, grated beets to this as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Carrot coins. Oh, and there's one other way I have to show you. Carrot coins. Um, I might add these to broccoli and cauliflower. Uh, I might add this to cubed beets or um, again, I might add it to like a carrot, uh, sorry, a ginger and a turmeric. Um, and again, whatever seasoning that you, that you desire. Uh, you can also put this with um, black radishes, uh, uh, what are those, Jerusalem artichokes, with any other vegetable of your choice, even with potatoes. With corn, with peas, like a mix of carrot corns and peas is really nice as well with the carrot coins, even with the matchsticks. The other uh, style, obviously, and I forgot to show you this one, is where you just simply... dice them and again this is a nice way to mix them with carrots and carrots and peas or garlic and ginger the reason why I wanted to show you the many different ways um, is because it, it like I said it comes down to how you're going to eat the food in future videos I'm going to show you how I eat fermented soups. Um, the whole soup is not fermented. The base is basically just a bone broth. And that's where these different styles, such as the chopped, they can be finely chopped or loosely, whoops, loosely chopped. Even the carrot coins, the grated, the matchstick. There's different ways that you can eat it. Like I said, for me, salad, um, I like this just as a its own sort of a kraut. I definitely add these, this style, in with my soups um, or with carrots, peas, corn, and sometimes I eat these just like this or again I add them with other vegetables and these are snacks. So keep that in mind. The way that you prepare the, the carrot will help you determine when you're putting it into a meal how you're going to uh, eat it essentially. Okay, so that said, without over talking, I'm now going to grab some jars. But before I do, uh, these are actual finished products of what I am trying to convey to you of different ways to eat the carrot. So this is carrot and cabbage kraut. This is the grated. So these, the um, this carrot cabbage kraut and this kraut is this style of carrots that I've used. And then this is beets and carrots. And this is the style of carrot that I used. And then this is cauliflower, so a bit of broccoli, celery, and carrots and again that's the diced style and this one in particular has lamb and beef in it this is actually a meal um, when I'm a little too lazy to prepare something I can just grab this and eat it some of the herbs that you can use I've kind of alluded to so I have caraway here uh, you can use cumin and or coriander you can use any type of curry anise seeds, dill, rosemary, fennel, and parsley, obviously, celery seeds, that type of thing. So today I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I don't have any lotus root. I like lotus root and um, carrots, and I also like bamboo shoots and carrot match sticks. So that's what I'm going to start with right now. Here I have some load, uh, sorry, some bamboo uh, shoots. These are in water. They're, they're already pre-cooked. So I have the match sticks all pre-cut with the bamboo shoots. And now I'm going to add a tablespoon of just plain old regular sea salt. You can use, you can really use just about any salt. In fact, 
I think I'll add a little more. And anywhere from, because this is, let's see, this is almost, if I pound this down, it'll be four, four cups, which is a quart jar. Uh, that said, however, um, this is six cups loose, loosely packed. Minimum for a quart jar is a tablespoon of salt. So four cups, a, a tablespoon of salt. And, oh my God, I'm making a mess here. Um, now, I think I'm gonna add fennel to this. So I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of fennel or more. <laughs> and I'm going to mix that up. I'm going to put that in this jar and then I'm going to add some water. My hands are nice and clean. Now I'm just going to pack it into the jar. Bamboo, if you've never had it, bamboo shoots is basically blah. It doesn't taste like anything. Uh, that's why I like to add it with a different vegetable, in, in particular carrots, because carrots have a nice sweetness to them and when they're raw and then when they're fermented with a an herb like fennel or caraway or something they just have such a beautiful flavor so that will permeate into the bamboo and give it a bit of flavor otherwise bamboo is really it's kind of reminds me of tofu it takes on the flavor of whatever you cook it with now i need my kraut pounder this is what I was saying, and that's not even four cups. So that was six cups loose and about three cups pounded down. So now I'm just going to add some spring water. So that is bamboo, fermented bamboo and carrot sticks. I'm gonna put that aside now and bring my jar back out. And now I'm going to do the baby carrots. I'm going to do this entire jar. Um, so that was a bag of 400, a pound, 454 grams, a pound of baby carrots. I'm going to add again about a tablespoon or more of the salt and I think I'm going to put some ginger, well just a little bit of ginger with this one. Again I do not peel uh, the ginger because I want the skin. Um, it contributes to building up the beneficial bacteria. You can loosely grate this because I'm using the largest setting on this and as you can see it's very loosely grated or you can uh, I have a very fine ginger grater somewhere in this kitchen. You can um, so I guess it would be this setting almost, or this setting. You can make it even smaller if you want. Depends on, because uh, I will eat this as I eat the baby carrots, uh, or what I'll do, and I'll show you in a future video, I save the brine and I add it to my fermented soups. Like I said, I have a lot of videos coming up to show you how to eat fermented foods and how to make these fermented foods. So that's about enough for that little bag of carrots, that's enough ginger. And I have the salt and I, th hmm, I think I'm gonna put a little bit of, mm, something tells me I wanna put cumin in this one. A pinch of cumin. Sorry, I just wanted to wash my hands. And again, I'll kind of mix that all up. And now I will simply pack this into the jar. This is gonna make such a delicious snack. Sadly, I'm the only one in my house now that, because my daughter is living with her father, uh, I'm the only one in the house that eats ferments, which is why I don't make a lot anymore because, like I said, I have gallons and gallons that I made last 
winter in the back room and I don't have the biggest appetite so unfortunately I cannot make tons of it because otherwise it'll just all go bad. So that's all I'm going to put in there. Now I'm going to fill it with water. Again, some good quality spring water. I don't recommend tap water unless you live in a, on a well. But that's uh, my point of view and it's simply because people pour medicines and paint thinner and oil and God only knows what else in the water system. And even though we have wonderful water purification plants, I'm not under the impression that they take that stuff out. So better to be safe than sorry. Not to mention all the fluoride and stuff that's in it, right? This is fermented baby carrots. So just so that you know, because this is a whole carrot, this is going to take a lot longer for this to ferment than, say, a matchstick or a grated or a diced or a coin. The smaller the carrot, the faster it ferments. The larger the carrot, the slower it ferments. So on that note, if you have whole carrots like this, yes, you can ferment them in a one gallon jar. It will take longer for this carrot to fully ferment. Once this full carrot is fermented, you can then treat this in any way that you desire, whether you choose to grate it after it's fermented, dice it after it's fermented, cut it into coins after it's fermented, or just roughly chop it like, you know, larger pieces or, mat, you know, larger matchsticks. Um, so what do I mean by that? Like quartered, in other words, which is not really a matchstick then, right? And that's where you simply just cut it in quarters. So they're, they are matchsticks in a sense, but they're very large matchsticks. So you can even, um, after it's fully fermented, you can do that as well. So yes, you can ferment the entire whole carrot from your garden, but you'll need a gallon jar or at least a larger jar or cro a large crock pot or something. Okay, so those are those two recipes. And now, let's move on to, well, I have these. Um, let's chop them. I'll chop the rest of this carrot off camera and come back in a moment. Just going to make a little wee bit, probably for a small jar. I don't know, one of these jars. I'm going to add some of the turmeric. And again, I'm just going to loosely cut this. And in fact, this particular one, I'm going to make into coins, turmeric coins. And I'm going to add that. And now I'm going, just a little bit, and I'm going to add about a teaspoon of salt, just because that's such a small amount. Now, because I already have, um, what do you call it, raw, tur uh, raw turmeric in this, I'm going to now add a pinch. I better get a spoon or else my fingers will discolor. I'm going to add a pinch, so that's about a half a teaspoon, of curry powder. I believe that's Madre's curry powder. It might be my South Indian curry powder. I'm not sure. And mix that up. Pack it into a jar. I think this size of jar is probably the best one. Let's see if I can do this without making a mess. Oh, my body's telling me it wants ginger in this. Okay, so I'll, I will add just a tiny bit of grated ginger to this in a moment. Yo, yo, yo. Somebody needs to make one of these with a smaller spout if you're a, an inventor <laughs> so that we can put these into smaller jars. And now add all that yummy salt and Okay, that 
that uh, that worked. So let's take a little piece of ginger. Where's my grater? And just a hint of ginger. Not too, too much. I don't want to overpower the ginger flavor. So about a teaspoon of ginger. Wash my hands again. And dry them. And now let's add some water to this. I'm going to add a little extra water for the simple fact that I use the brine in my soups. And there you have diced carrot, ginger, turmeric with curried. This is curried carrot. The next recipe we're going to make is the carrot coins. Toss them in there. This is going to be a garlicky dill carrot coins. So I'm just going to get some garlic that I have here and loosely chop it and throw it in with the carrots. I don't like those little ends. Again, you can grate the carrot you can, or the garlic. You can put the garlic in whole if you want. So there's about three or four garlic. I'm now going to add approximately, oh, for that much, probably only a half a teaspoon of the dill. And hmm, I put salt in that, right? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, I'm going to add about a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of salt, just because I'm making just a little wee bit, right? I'm going to mix that up. You don't have to mix it. I mean, you can just throw this all in a jar. The water dissolves the salt, so you don't need to be overly concerned with that. And now I'm just going to add this to the jar. Make sure I get all that salt. And add water. So I know many of you are going to, especially if you're new to fermenting, you're going to ask me if you can use water kefir or fermented whey from your yogurt or why am I not covering this with a, a lid or a cabbage leaf? I don't need to. Uh, you really don't need to as long as it's reasonably submersed under there. Um, even then, it's still not going to go bad because the room where I store these, if you haven't yet seen my pantry tour video, I highly recommend you do. It's cold enough that I don't, this will be a slow ferment and I don't have to worry about bacteria getting in there. And because I have sufficient salt. Uh, that said, you can put a cabbage leaf or a nipple lid or a weight on top if you wish. Um, and you can use a metal lid, you can use a plastic lid. Um, hand tight. Do I burp the jars? No, I don't burp my jars. I'm a lazy fermenter. I, I just, my life is far too busy to be, and I have far too many ferments to be going around every day and burping the, and what is burping? Burping means just simply letting a little bit of air in. Um, my concern is that sometimes this liquid might seep over because carrots are really rich in sugar, as are beets. Um, so I do this also with beets and even cabbage. I will put uh, these, I will put something under these jars, like a container like this, or I will put all my jars in a plastic tub 
and let it seep into the tub and then I just clean the tub and clean the jars and that's easier for me. You do whatever works for you. My favorite way of eating these is with caraway seeds so I'm just going to add about a teaspoon of caraway and half a teaspoon of salt This one is going to be incredibly simple. That's all I'm going to add. I'm not going to make you suffer. I'm going to pack this off camera into this jar. Voila, and I packed it down. So now I'm just going to add some water. And I'm going to put a lid on it. The reason why I like to use salt water, because I was referring to the fact that you could use fermented whey or water kefir um, as a starter, right, or in place of salt water. The reason why I like to use the salt water is because, as I alluded to earlier, all of this brine, once these vegetables are done, I will add this brine to my soups. Uh, I will also drink it as a tonic. This is what we have created so far and I do have four carrots left so I think I'm going to ferment these whole or maybe not maybe I'll just chop them in half because this is the jar I want to use. So let's do that and then when all these are fermented fully fermented I will do a video update to show you and keep this video in mind um, because when I make future recipes I will be drawing from these carrots and this will be the video that you'll want to come to to make these for those recipes. So that's it. I'm just going to drop those in. Hopefully they will all fit with any luck. Perfect. Awesome. This is a, I think this is a Bubby's jar. I had pickles in this at one point. Uh, again, I'm going to add a full tablespoon. Actually, I'm going to add a tablespoon and a half to this jar just because I know that this is going to take a while to ferment and I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to come back to it anytime soon. Ooh, okay. And apparently my body wants to have rosemary in this. I've never tried this one before, so this will be interesting. Uh, a half a teaspoon. This is a, a mix of, I guess, whole and ground rosemary. I think this is from my mother-in-law's garden, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and that's it. And now I'm just going to add some water. Always leave a little bit of head space. You'll notice even in this one, I left about, I don't know, what's that, half an inch to an inch of head space. Two inches is ideal, but um, that's sufficient enough. Now, in this, you can add garlic, ginger, turmeric. You can add, uh, if you want to make a full gallon, you can add some cauliflower, broccoli, florets. You can add chopped or sliced lotus root, uh, ch water chestnuts, whole water chestnuts or uh, sliced water chestnuts. Same with the carrot coins. If you didn't want to add garlic or even with the garlic, you can add some sliced water chestnuts to that or some sliced um, lotus root or some sliced um, Jerusalem artichoke. The beautiful thing is, however you would normally eat carrots on a day-to-day -day basis, you can combine that with any of these different styles of prepared carrots and ferment it and eat it. So that's why I say, 
infinite possibilities when it comes to carrots. I could even ferment this with like a chickpea or I'd probably do it with the chopped one, a chickpea or, or a, a fava bean or um, any sort of a bean, white kidney beans, uh, lupini beans, something like that. So you can mix, right? You can mix um, beans with vegetables. Uh, you can put meat. I showed you the, the jar earlier. You can put meat in these if you want. Cooked chicken or turkey or beef or lamb or pork. Um, the sky's the limit. I mean, the, really, there is no limit. It's, it's infinite possibilities. So that is the video that I wanted to create today. Like I said, I will come back and... Uh, review all these in perhaps two weeks, three weeks time, definitely a month's time. These I know will take at least two or three months to fully ferment. These will be, this one will be ready probably in about seven to ten days if I leave them out in the counter like this. My back room is cooler so even this might take a little bit longer. It might take a couple of weeks for it to ferment because it's cool enough like a fridge. It's not cold, cold, but it's cool like a fridge. Um, so I will come back and show you what this looks like. I might just take a, a snapshot of it and post it on the community page, uh, a before and after to show you what it looks like because the carrots do change color um, and so does the bamboo shoots, uh, just so that you can see what it looks like. Regardless, I will come back and give you a a follow-up. So that is what I have for you today. Um, let me know how you prepare your carrots in the comments section below. Not just for me, but for other viewers that might be seeking ideas. Um, my brain's a little scattered today. Um, I hope it didn't come across too badly, but um, it is a bit scattered and because there's so many possibilities with this, um, I don't have them all on the top of my head. I tend to lean towards favorite ones that I know my body likes. But that said, like I said, if you have a recipe that other different types of vegetables that you add to these, put that in the description box below. Greatly appreciated. So that's what I have for you today. Carrots, infinite possibilities. Thanks for watching. I hope you like this video. If you do, please like, share. And uh, until I see you in a future video. Ciao for now.